Before the tale of Randolph Thor, the epic story of the Wheel of Time humbly begins with a man named Jim. Known to the world as Robert Jordan, author of the best-selling Wheel of Time series, James Oliver Rigney Jr. was born October 17, 1948, in Charleston, South Carolina. Growing up, he often told about lining up, I think, Jules Verne, Mark Twain, and Jack London, and thinking, I want to write books. He joined the Army in 1968 and served two tours in Vietnam as a helicopter gunner. He returned to begin college at the Citadel as a veteran student and took a job as a civilian nuclear engineer working for the United States Navy. And it was during this time that he took a hard look at his life and decided to become a full-time writer. He was in the hospital with a blood clot when he did the famous, the thing so many people talk about doing. He threw a book across the room and said, I can do better than that. He wrote something called Warriors of the Altai. I read it and, well, wasn't what I was interested in, but um, it, it, it showed he could do it. So I gave him a contract for a book that became The Fallen Blood. We've been seeing a lot of each other. He brought a tiger claw from Vietnam to show my son. We all came running upstairs to my office one day and said, Mom, he'll take me to see the Star Trek movie. And I said, can I come too? And he said, yes. And I guess that was our first date. She edited Jim and they fell in love and they got married and we all became friends. I've edited every, every single one of his books except for his Cheyenne Raiders, an agent said to me once, what if he gave you a real piece of rock? And I said, well, he never would. Tom Doherty called me. He had gotten the rights to do a Conan the Barbarian novel. I said, well, Jim could do it. And he liked doing it so much, he ended up writing seven of them. He was using a new name, as you know, Jim used pen names. Over the next decade, Rigney wrote under many pen names, Jackson O'Reilly, Reagan O'Neill, and of course, Robert Jordan. J-O-R, that was his initials. And I guess the rest just grew. Because the way his mind worked, he'd be working on current stuff, but in the back, on the back burner, things are cooking away. Jim said that he had just dreamed to write a big fantasy. He said his first thought was, just how would it be to be told that you are going to be the savior of the world, but you're going to go mad and kill everyone you love in the process? We bought the book uh, in the mid-80s. It's four years of actual work with words on paper um, before he finished The Eye of the World. God, I fell in love with it. I read it, you know, I said, boy, this is, this is big. This is the first thing I thought could sell like Tolkien. The New York Times called Robert Jordan the American heir to Tolkien. Pretty strong statement from the Times. In a matter of three books, Robert Jordan had developed an international following. Robert Jordan was a genius. He kept so much in his head. He had so much depth and wealth um, of world building for the series, it's mind boggling. We've, we've got somewhere around three million plus words of, of text. Um, the notes are just as big. There are very few things. Uh, to which people have been willing to give this enormous commitment. But in 2005, Jordan was diagnosed with amyloidosis, a rare blood disease, interrupting work on what he'd hoped was the final book in the series. He was not well on our final book tour, which was Knife of Dreams. He failed to receive a diagnosis until after the end of the tour. This is true of the disease amyloidosis in general. By that time, his heart had received so much battering from the disease that it, it was simply failing. And it took, it, oh, it took about a year for that to happen. It was so sad. I mean, is it, he was a friend I took personally and he was a, a brilliant, uh, epic storyteller. There was nobody like him, and it was a terrible loss. He had spoken publicly before that that he would destroy anybody who tried to work in his universe, and he would sweep his uh, hard disk three times to make sure nobody could ever get anything out of it. But in these last weeks, he was telling us what needed to happen. 
He wrote these very detailed notes. He dictated passages, uh, the, end, the beginning and the end of this last book. <laughs> and uh, Harriet knew he wanted this series finished. When fantasy author Brandon Sanderson was selected to finish The Wheel of Time, fans rejoiced. Over the next four years, Sanderson skillfully penned the final three volumes of the series, working from Jordan's notes and partial manuscript. What I've pointed the entire sequence that I've worked on toward is this last scene that he finished. He always promised us he had it in mind, and he, he did write it before he passed away. On January 8th, 2013, a memory of light will go on sale. If ever a book was long awaited, it's this one. Robert Jordan's legacy lives on. Just as Jordan wrote, there are no beginnings or endings to the turning of the wheel of time. His masterpiece stands as one of the greatest achievements in modern literature.